It took 90 days to decide how to spend almost $6 billion, not including a few billion more in federal funds. And they spent it pretty much as the governor requested, cutting taxes along the way. Not only that, the legislative branch gave the executive the ability to reorder his administration. So in all, a pretty good session for the majority party, for the loyal opposition, rather less so. Arkansas Week and a review of the session coming up. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Arkansas Week. It isn't sine die, but a two-week recess until that moment would seem to serve as a fair enough point to look back on the 92nd session of the Arkansas General Assembly. And so we begin. We're joined by Representative Vivian Flowers, Democrat of Pine Bluff, Speaker Matt Shepard, Matthew Shepard, Republican of El Dorado, and Senator Jonathan Dismang, Republican of BB. Lady, gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, we'll begin with you. This was a session that non unexpectedly given the majorities that Mr. Hutch Governor Hutchinson's party enjoys in both chambers. It was a good session for him. I think so. I, I think, can't think of anything he didn't get that he really would. Right. And I think the governor at the outset, he kind of <coughs> referred to the four T's leading into, into session, and we were able to uh, pass legislation addressing all those when it comes to tax cuts, highways or transportation, uh, teacher pay, and then ultimately transformation, which was done here in the last few days. So I think it was a very good session for the governor, and I think uh, on the whole, uh, I, th I think that what you saw was, uh, for the most part, good work on a bipartisan basis for the people of Arkansas. Well, but there was some disappointment for the loyal opposition, as a matter of fact, several. <laughs> I would say so. Uh, I think that even when we think about the four T's, if we look at highways uh, and as well as the uh, tax relief, uh, I would feel comfortable speaking for my colleagues in, in the House and Senate uh, that they just didn't go far enough um, for working our Kansans. And I think that not prioritizing um, working families, and in the state, I, I believe that the median income individually is $25,000 a year, and I want to say 56 or 57,000 for the family. Um, the tax cuts we've seen uh, really over the course of, since I've been in the legislature, have not done a whole lot to impact those families. Well, I'll, I'll spare your colleagues the question and pick it up for them. Uh, they would argue, I suspect, as would the administration, that the ta income tax cut bill, which was sponsored by the administration, went a long way toward providing relief for the middle and lower income Arkansans. Your well, response? I, I think that that's a good sounding argument. But when you really look at the numbers and look at the state and look at what the income for our working families is and look at, for example, this last uh, tax cut benefited the most wealthy Arkansans. And we're talking about super wealthy, I would say, at $456,000 a year. And, I, you know, I, I also would feel comfortable speaking on behalf of my colleagues uh, on, the, on the Democratic side and saying that we, we're not against tax cuts. I just think we have to prioritize. And if we're going to say that we're going to look to providing relief for those who would invest, I think that's what we hear a lot, then I would say let's ensure that there is investment. But I think that nationally and, and, and I, dare I say, perhaps on the state level, we'll see people who benefit and enjoy those tax cuts and we won't know what the investment has been. And I think if you look at EITC, for example, and I think there was an attempt uh, at that this session, we know that that works. And that's a Reagan policy. And then when we look at, you know, trickle down economics and the idea that we give tax cuts, wide, huge tax cuts to the most wealthy and to corporations without any requirement for returning those uh, dollars to invest in jobs and 
then, you know, that has failed. We know that that has failed. So I just would say that um, what we did um, did not go far enough to benefit the majority of our Kansans. I'll swing it back to you, gentlemen, in terms of, uh, of the trickle-down argument, which the administration, after all, was it not fair to say that it, it, it actually argued that, in effect, well, I mean, with the top so, co income yeah, uh, but bracket let's and the corporate? I think you have to go look at what we've done historically over not just this session, but the prior two. There was a focus on the middle-income working families and lower-income families, and an enormous amount of tax cuts provided. Uh, to those two categories this year and, and it was a, a commitment from the governor in his campaign and also as a legislative body to take a look at the rest of those folks that have not benefited from the income tax cuts previously put in place and that's the reason you saw the 5.9. I would agree uh, in, in some regards that there's still some work to be done in You're regards talking about the top bracket yeah, cut the top bracket the, the down five to 5.9%. Uh, that there's still some work to be done. Uh, it was not a perfect bill. There's uh, some adjustments that I think that we need to make in regards to tables, but just because of budget restraints, you weren't able to do that. And what I mean by the tables, you know, you currently have three separate tables to work from here in the state. Uh, we have a very complicated income tax structure, and there needs to be some civilization that we do moving forward, and I'm committed, and I'm sure others are, of making sure that's in place. Mr. Speaker. Well, I, th I agree with Senator Dismang. I think that to look at these tax cuts, you have to consider a couple different things. One, you have to look at it in the totality of the past number of sessions. So you, you go back and look at the priority, as Senator Dismang referenced, in lower and middle income tax relief in, in previous sessions, always, I think, with the understanding that that cut at the top end would be down the line. Well, that, that day was this session, essentially. And so I think you have to consider that and also look that there are, have been a number of other things. Even going back to my first term in the House, uh, one of the things that, that uh, I sponsored from the very outset was a sales tax holiday. Not particularly, uh, not particularly a large uh, dollar figure, and, and some people argue that's not significant tax relief, but that actually benefits uh, working families in Arkansas when it comes time to buy school supplies uh, clothes for the, during, during uh, the first weekend in August. So I think that, that we have to look at it in the totality of that. And then also, uh, as we think about tax cuts, there's always what's the impact on the budget. And the thing that I've said uh, from the outset was that I felt that that tax cut that we did pass was manageable uh, and, and was measured and that it did provide significant relief, but it, we were still able to meet uh, the demands of our budget and be able to provide the kind of services that I think our Kansans and the body as a whole were looking to continue to provide. Well, are you concerned, gentlemen, that in, in measured and manageable cuts, I think, to quote the speaker, that they are in fact that? We've sacrificed s scores of millions, well into nine figures, once right. all of the cuts are fully implemented in the out year, what's 03, 04, 05? Yeah, fiscal. No, yeah, no doubt there were a significant number of changes, not just in relation to the tax cuts, but also transformation, other items that are significant in nature. And so you have a very complicated puzzle. A lot of these are not triggered to take place until future years to allow some more time uh, to, to ensure that we can absorb uh, those revenue losses here in the state. Uh, but again, you know, there were some additional pushes for uh, tax cuts in other places. Uh, and, uh, and again, just because of the complexity of where we are right now, letting some of these things uh, kind of prove themselves out, I think we're in, a, we're in a good spot to be able to manage and hold. Uh, in prior years, we've done some things in regards to restricted reserve and long-term reserve, which will help us make sure that we have what we need in place for our, our current services. Right. At the same time, gentlemen, Ms. Flowers would argue, as did her caucus, her conference, among others, that uh, the cuts have made it impossible for either the general, the legislative or the executive to make strategic investments in terms of higher ed, pre-K, uh, DYS, other, other, the other services that you have mentioned. Well, and I, but if you look at RSA, I think there's been needed increases to the majority of those items. There's been a commitment from the governor on pre-K uh, in prior year that's transitioned and it's actually in RSA as a ongoing uh, expenditure, which, which is good if you're in favor of the program. And so I, I would say it was measured and I think in, in all in all there was some good compromises that were made and, and a lot of those issues that, that you know she's addressed and, and that you, you referred to uh, were, were taken care of in revenue stabilization. You, you talked about, well Mr. Speaker I guess you concur, I'm surmising that you would. Uh, well I would. I think that uh, 
I think that a lot of, a lot of uh, voices were heard during this session and, and certainly uh, Representative Flowers, uh, uh, the points she makes are things that obviously we all take into account and, and I think when you look at the RSA, I think it takes into account a number of areas where uh, the, either the administration or the legislature felt that there uh, needed to be some investment in terms of uh, what, what were the priority items. And I think that uh, we ultimately have a budget and an RSA that, that addresses the needs of the state. And as with anything else, as we move into an, an, another uh, fiscal year, uh, we'll continue to monitor, and when fiscal session run, rolls around, we'll you know, monitor and, and make uh, any adjustment that might be ne needed. But I feel very good about where we're at as a state from a fiscal standpoint. Ms. Flowers, a response? I feel good about the fact that I believe that there was a great deal done in a bipartisan fashion. I don't feel good about where we are. I think that um, the key is the fact that we set priorities. And if we are cutting taxes to benefit the wealthiest Arkansans at the tune, I believe, of about six thousand, an average six thousand dollars a year to benefit each one of those folks who would benefit from that tax cut, and then look what we did two years ago to address the lowest income, and then you're talking about a benefit of five dollars per family, and then go back further in my first term, and I believe uh, Speaker Shepard and I both. Uh, voted against that tax cut for different reasons, but we voted both voted against it. And um, you know, I believe that the average cut, um, I want to say, was fifty dollars or five hundred dollars. I can't, and I I know that's a big difference, but you had people in the seventeenth session. Yeah, in the seventeenth session, you had people um, all the way up to I want to say eighty thousand, seventy or eighty thousand dollars. Um, from 50,000, but the bottom line is you, you had a pretty, I don't want to say, I, don't, I would never want to say insignificant, but when you look at what we're taking out of uh, the, the coffers for the state to be able to, to address those needs and look at the fact, and I always say this not as a, uh, a criticism of our state, but we are one of the poorest states in the country. So if we're not addressing those issues fully, if we're not addressing pre-K fully and funding it fully and waiting year to year to see what we can, uh, what's left over to address it, then we leave those issues left undone and then dole out money permanently. Because, you know, we, we cut those taxes, it takes 75 votes in the House, you know, 75% of the vote to raise taxes. So we're basically, sending that money back out as if the state needs and those issues are addressed. And so I just think it's, it is a matter of priority. And I'm not saying we don't ever do it, but we can't provide relief when we're not doing things to address the things that are creating problems and issues and pressure you know, on our economy and, and on the people of the state. Yeah, gentlemen, you've both said that uh, that if if uh, the outcome of the of the the budget process isn't satisfactory, that you can come back in a subsequent session and make uh, I think adjustments was the, sp the term the speaker made. But the gentlewoman has has a point. Is that uh, tinkering with the tax, the income tax code, particularly when three quarter majorities are needed in both chambers, ris risky stuff, is it not? It's a high bar. Well, and, and again, to chin, to yeah. quote the uh, speaker. Again, that's why I would say that the, you know the final bill that even I carried that, that reduced the upper bracket to five point nine w in a way wasn't perfect, but it was because we were mindful of the budget and the revenue impact that it was going to be you know to have. And so I, I do feel like again we've got the safeguards in place that we need in regards to restricted reserve and some other items to fill gaps when they when they need to be filled or if we do have a revenue shortfall in the future. I think, but if you want to look at the state as a whole, we're doing very well and we're progressing very well. I mean, I think there was a, a report that came out that we were 12th, I think, in the nation as far as, uh, you know, personal income increase, which is a good indicator for how we're doing. And again, that's just a snapshot in time for one quarter, mm -hmm. but one that we should be very mindful of and be proud of. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you want to get in on that one? Well, I, I agree with Senator Dismay. I think that uh, you look at, uh, uh, a lot of different indicators. The state seems to be doing very well from a fiscal standpoint, and um, I appreciate the governor's leadership on on these issues over the past number of sessions. Uh, and and ultimately, uh, I think that with any of these bills, it's about making the case 
and to the individual members and I think that's what we were able to do in this session was with the governor and leadership on both ends is just to make the case of here's here's the proposal this is why we think it's the right the right step forward and what we ultimately saw was that uh, the membership as a whole agreed and so I think we're in a I think we're in a very good place uh, but as with anything else, we will always uh, always continue to, to monitor. And um, you know, I think when you look at again at RSA, I think that um, that that's something that really represents uh, the, the priorities of the legislature and the administration. And it's something that that uh, uh, we should be able to meet all the necessary requirements. Senator, you did break ranks or differ, I should say, maybe in terms of budget policy at least a couple of times and pretty pointedly. Uh, in terms of uh, general revenue and diver the diversion of general revenue from uh, uh, from the general fund into highway, right. you st at the end of the session, do you still share? Do you still believe that? Yeah, I mean multiple reasons, and I think what what you're addressing is the three and six in increase on uh, gasoline and diesel, which I was not supportive Correct. of, and then also inside that same bill, there was a transfer of general revenue that's anticipated to be earned by the new casino uh, money here in the state. Uh, but also in that same provision, it almost mandated that the $35 million transfer occur, which then in, in a way puts them in, in front of some of maybe other priorities, the highway department, and when I say they, in front of some other priorities of the state, which, which does give me concern. And uh, you know, again, this is something that I differ with a number of people, but the, the highway department is an independent agency voted to be independent by the people. Uh, the general revenues that we receive, I don't think should be diverted to an independent, independent agency. Ed, you also expressed some reservations or uh, uh, antsiness or <laughs> skip about for the fourth quarter of this year, and it's a, a downturn. It is a tight budget. No one right. Would. I mean, if, if you look at revenue stabilization, we're relying on the performance fund to be able to make up some increases and the restricted reserve uh, for for some of the expenditures. You know, the money's simply not in the forecast. Again, it's been prepared for. We knew that was going to be the case, but it is going to be very tight. We talked about the puzzle. You know, earlier it's very complicated. It all has to fall together, work in place. And it's going to take some time to, to figure out to make sure that everything will, in fact, fall in place the way that we thought it would. In terms of tax policy for the next one, two regular sessions, or if you throw in fiscal sessions as well if you want, although sure. basically the regular session, there was an EITC, again, an earned income tax credit proposal. This time it came from the Senate and it came right. from the pro tem, right. uh, the Republican pro tem came a little late in the session, but is there any future for an EITC in the next one, two, three sessions? Well, so for me, prioritization of what we need to do is, on, is simplifying. Any fiscal or yeah. political room for Yeah, it, it depends. Again, I, my, my focus is going to be simplification, and if EITC is able to play a role in that to be able to help smooth the tables, get us to a singular table, uh, then, then maybe it is. But at this point, uh, there is revenue impact for that. Um, and I, I would like to see how it would play out uh, in regards to a, a more uh, comprehensive uh, reform package, again, focused on simplification on income taxes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you got 100 members of, by the way, are you going to seek re-election as Speaker? Well, you know, I've, I've been encouraged by some of my membership to consider a second term, and, and I've said that I would consider it, but I wanted to get beyond uh, the session. So, uh, you know, at this point, you I'm going to make some news here if you want. Well, to I know. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I would say at this point, I'm, I'm talking with members to, to gauge whether the support is is there. Um, but I'm, I'm open to that. I've enjoyed my op, my term as uh, or my session as speaker. And, and I, I felt good about the work that we've done. But uh, just uh, at this point, talking with members. All right. Well, back to the question, which is, is there, do you see sufficient room or it's an unknowable, <coughs> everyone acknowledges where the economy will be next year or, in, you know, eight quarters from now. But the EITC was uh, was very attractive, of course, to the uh, the Democratic caucus. Well, I think I agree with uh, Senator Dismay. I think that that's something that remains to be seen. I, I'm the type that I like to, I like to engage in that discussion. Uh, hear all sides of the issue and look at, look to see where we're at from a, from a fiscal standpoint. Uh, it did have, uh, it obviously came out of the Senate. There was actually an EITC bill that was filed in the House as well. Uh, and so I know that there are a number of members that are very interested in that. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, but given the fact that we're just coming out of a session, 
uh, you know, I think it's probably too early to say one way or the other, but obviously I'm, I'm certainly glad to have those types of conversations. I need to touch on the governor's reorganization plan, which uh, both chambers handily uh, uh, gave Mr. Hutchinson a 2,000 some hundred pages, and I think it was described to me when it was first presented to the, uh, as, as a wedding cake in white bounder, binders. Uh, anyway, you got the job done. Mr. Hutchinson says it's likely to save money. Are you well, that's the goal anyway, in addition to uh, streamlining the management structure. Uh, I, I, I think we don't know yet, and I, and I think that that is the goal and the intention of everyone who voted for it. And so with that, you know, I was supportive and I voted for it, and I do appreciate that um, really across the aisle and and with the governor's office there was uh, I think a great deal of um, willingness to listen and address concerns all the way through the process so I do appreciate that but I think you know the jury's out we don't know what it'll do and and um, you know I'm, I'm hopeful that it will save money. Some have advised and I think uh, the administration likely the governor likely would not argue with it Mr. Speaker that it even if it costs five million dollars more, the streamlined management structure would be worth it to, to him or any succeeding governor. Well, I, for me personally, I anticipate it's going to save money. Now, initially, it, it may not save much. Uh, I think that the initial estimate was around 15 million. Uh, the governor's directive, as I understand it, to these uh, agencies, boards, and commissions, as they and to the secretaries that are ultimately uh, put in those positions, is this this uh, reorganization is going to have to take place within the current budgetary amounts and uh, I believe having served on the transformation advisory board that he put together uh, going back o I guess over two years ago I believe it's a great opportunity for us to see tremendous savings and I'm excited about the fact that that we were able to put this together it perhaps not only being one of the biggest bills that's probably ever been filed it was probably one of the the most well vetted bills because when you look at the house end uh, that bill was broken down. It, actually, there were individual bills filed for, for different uh, segments of the bill. Those were discussed in committee, and then ultimately the, those were all put together in one bill. On the Senate end, they, they even took more time on their end. And, and this even goes back to, uh, I know we had uh, the governor and leadership had had conversations even going back into the fall about what was coming and making themselves available to the members to hear their, their concerns. But I think uh, it's exciting from the standpoint of just as you had a tax task force to look at, uh, at revenue, now we have one of the first efforts to take a comprehensive look at how do we spend money and how are we organized as a government. And so it's not, but it's not only about saving money for me too, it, it was also about hopefully being able to deliver uh, better services in a more efficient manner to the people of Arkansas. And I think that that two-fold goal is, a goal is something that is attainable, but it's going to take work. It's going to take uh, work from the administration and from those secretaries to <coughs> Uh, now take what we've passed and implement and drive those savings into the future. Call it red or call it blue, and most people would call it very red, but in terms of the social chemistry, uh, uh, the balance, as it were, in, in the general sun, a couple of minutes remaining in our program. Uh, Ms. Flowers, you, your conference, your caucus, Democratic side, you got your brains beat out on just about every social hot button issue that there was. There were repeated abortion bills. Uh, I would say we got our brains beat out on abortion bills. <laughs> but across well, immigra the, there's immigration yeah. as well. Well, uh, but across the spectrum, I think snap. we can. Yeah, but I think we can also look at some of the things that didn't happen and look at some of the work that we did together. So just yesterday, there was a bill signing for the DACA in, tuition, in, in state tuition. Um, there was uh, an immigration-related bill led by a Republican. I That's think, right. Dhaka, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Senator Joyce started that um, bill many years ago, and Dan Douglas picked it up, and it took the votes of Democrats and Republicans to make it happen, and it did. Uh, I think that when we look at um, the bill that allows uh, nurses. Um, to work in the state of Arkansas with that DACA status. Uh, that's something that also happened um, in a bipartisan fashion, but under Republican leadership. So um, 
a lot of these things, and I think that we can look at bills that didn't pass, that um, have a really strong beginning, and we'll see in the next session where we picked up Republican support. And so I don't. I wouldn't say we got our brains beat in um, across the board. I have a gift board. for overstatements. I, I mean, there was there there was um, a bill where we worked together um, on the last day with regard to transparency, and I know that there was great support on the front end and discussion, and it failed at the end, but passed um, finally on the last day. So. I'll give the majority, the, the, the majority party the last few, a more moderate General Assembly than it sometimes appeared, gentlemen. Mr. Speaker? You know, I don't, I, I don't know that you, can, that you can neatly categorize it into one word. I think for me, as I look at issues or bills that come up, it's really from one, one bill to the other. I think by and large, there are very few issues that actually would break down on a partis partisan basis. And uh, to represent Flowers Point, I think that there are plenty of examples where uh, we worked on a bipartisan basis. And so mm -hmm. while uh, there's, I think certainly there, there are uh, bills that get a lot of attention that maybe do break down somewhat partisan, uh, I think that one of the things the people of Arkansas can really be proud about is that uh, by and large we get along very well and we're able, the goal for me as speaker was, one of the goals was that we would have debate, we would take a vote, we would let the chips fall where they may, and then we'd move on to another issue. And I think that that's what we were able to do. And with that, we're simply out of time. Lady, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. thank you for watching as always. See you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. The Arkansas Times and KUAR-FM 89.